Chabad has become one of the largest Jewish organizations in the world. How do you say it? Chabad, not Chabad. Chabad? Okay, it's not a rodeo. Chabad. Chabad brings nachos to us all. Hi, good morning everyone. This is going to be the beginning of a new series, a new journey that we're going to go on together. I'm going to be visiting many, many Chabad houses around America. I have a goal to visit a Chabad house in every single state and I'm going to take you guys along. The idea is I want you guys to be able to see what I see when I go to visit Chabad houses. I know there's a lot of exciting things that people see, but no one ever really gets to see the behind the scenes. So I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes to get to know what really goes down in the Chabad house town and how is it for the rabbi and the rabbitson in a town with no religious or orthodox community living all on your own. So I'm heading to Columbia, Missouri to spend Shiva with there. The reason why I chose Columbia as the first stop is because Columbia is my home away from home. For those that know me, I'm from Australia and I live here in America. But my home away from home, a family that I'm very, very close to, is the Chabad of Columbia, Missouri. I had a dream that he wanted the uh, three Chabad houses accessible everywhere to make it easy as possible for a Jew to access a Chabad house and, and get in touch. Now, what's the idea of it? The idea is that, uh, that if someone wants to connect to Judaism to get closer, whether it's to just have a little bit of insight, just a little prayer, one, as we like to say, one mitzvah, or whether he wants to totally submerge himself and get involved and learn completely <clears throat> change their life to become completely observant. Whatever that person is looking for, we try to offer that to them. Okay, we're finally at the Chabad house. Let's check it out. This is the Chabad of Mizzou. Look at that wonderful sign. This is Chabad house. It is across the road from the from MU, Mizzou University, because this is officially a Chabad on campus, which means that it's mainly catering for the students on campus. But now it's the summertime, so the school's over. Let's have a check it. Let's have a look inside. It's not a huge building, it's a house. Most Chabads, when they begin, they begin in a little house. And from that, they slowly expand. Here's the Chabad house, it's a very, very small room. But here's where all the action happens. And here is the Arn Kodesh, where the Sefer Torah is kept. Outside is where they have all the events. And here's a small little room. Let's look around. Let's look at these wonderful pictures from all the different events that happens. And you have more on this side. Your home, away from home. How beautiful. Be good and I'll be good. And this one, you have and you have more pictures. This is something that's common on Chabad on campuses, to have pictures of all the events throughout the year, um, all over the Chabad house. Can we introduce our friends? These are the two Bachrin. These are the two rabbinical students that come to, to help us celebrate Shavuot. Have us. Let's see what's going on in a Chabad house before Shabbat. We have the kids watching the Shpai. Shpai is a, a movie about a spy who fights the evil Yetzahara. Let's see what's going on outside. Uh, the rabbinical students getting their haircuts before for the holiday because it's a mitzvah to get a haircut before the holiday. We haven't had a haircut so long because of the sphera. We don't get a haircut Why we count the sphera, so they're getting a haircut before the holiday. You know, you have the front of the car, you have like the, the body, and then you have the motor. So I consider myself as the motor, like the drive behind everything. 
you know, I need to make sure that I'm doing my best because I know that everything is, is really depending on how I'm doing. So it's a big responsibility, but that's how I feel. So my wife, we both come from Brooklyn, New York, Crown Heights. And how did you end up in Columbia? My father's from Kansas City. Therefore, I already knew, of, I knew it existed. One of our, well, growing up as being educated in Crown Heights, growing, I got to see the Rebbe as a young child. One of, one of the, we were always educated and always um, confused with the idea that when you get older, when you get married, when you start a family, you're going to open a Chabad house, you're going to go and Shlomo. To be the Rebbe's ambassadors around the world. So therefore, I already knew this is what I want to do. I already knew my, what I want to do. Like it, I mean, I always felt like I wanted to contribute, like be a shlachag, but um, here it was interesting because I didn't, never imagined myself here at all. Uh, but I don't know, we just came here and we felt the need. Like you feel a, a need. What you do is you put it in this smaller cut it in like that, and then you cut it. Okay, do you want them cut like that big? I don't know, you decide, it doesn't matter. As long as it tastes yummy. It was like, you know, like Walmart. First they went to all the big cities, and after they covered the big cities, they started going to all the small cities. Oh, yeah. It's just a fly. I don't like it. Shoot a fly no, did, bro. Yeah. No, he has it filling. Basically, I'm, I, he just bought a pair of filling. So, yes. So, if you're going to tell him I'm not going to make it, I'm going to see. But I'm going to see him tonight. Help him though, basically what this is doing, basically I'm training him every day, so he's napping. He's going to college, he's back. And tell him we're having Shabbat dinner at 8 o'clock, I'll, I'll text him later. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. 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 But generally speaking, there's not much happening. No Jewish school, no Jewish education, nothing. Yeah, but it's a fluke. What happened? Want a drink? Oh, you need help with it? Now, been for, we've been in for 10 years. 10 years. Baruch Hashem, thank God. How many kids do you have? Um, a a physical, a biological kid, or a spiritual kid? Okay, explain what's with biological kids and what's with spiritual. Kids. You have spiritual so, kids that we don't know about. Yeah, I have spiritual. So basically, people that we get in, we get we get close to, and, and they become part of our Chabad yes, family. We call them spiritual kids. Basically, we have I have six kids. Thank God, one was born in New York, and all the other ones were born in Missouri. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, half them. Yeah. Ace? Ace. Adinai? Adonai. Hello, Hecha. Hello, Hecha. Hello, Hecha. This is Matt. Matt just knocked on the Chabad house um, door and he came for Shabbat. And, and it, was, it was crazy. He just knocked on the, on, on the door of the Chabad house here in Columbia, Missouri. Why is it crazy? And Everyone's always walking. The reason why it's crazy, it's crazy is because I happened to, we happened to be here. We're having the meal in an hour in, in, oh, in Rabbi's house. If we weren't, if we weren't here, he, he would have missed us. So now he got an opportunity to do a mitzvah to put on to fill it. Yeah, how would you know? And um, I think it's just a wonderful story. Yeah, put on to has put on to in years and years yeah, and years. Yeah. And now we're going to have Shuba built together. What a wonderful uh, story. So, and so what's unique about Colombia is the fact that it's not mainly the community. You're mainly here for MU, which is the University of Missouri. Yeah. Which means that you're mainly catering for college students. It's a college campus, a college city. So our, our main clientele, so to say, are actually Jewish students at the university. It's a truck right here. MU is the other name for it. MU or Mizzou, different names that they have. How is it different to the, like the regular Chabad house of the community? It's a lot more intense. You see yourself as like as something very, very vital. Like everyone's a very important community also, but with students, it's very fast paced and you really have to be there for them. Like text, like there's so much to think about. And was college campus always something that you wanted to do? No, no, had it. Like it didn't matter at the end of the day what style. It was just like we want to get, we want to bring Judaism to people. We want to be of help to the Jewish people. So then we just. Shabbos, we'll be right. There. We'll we'll come one minute. Mm -hmm. We'll set up Shabbos. Shabbos. Shabbos, everyone. We're lighting the Shabbat candles. We're bringing in the Shabbat, welcoming the Shabbat with the light. Light into the world. Come, we have to make a bracha. Come, make a bracha. Come, make a bracha. Good job, everyone. We're going to be gone for three days. And we can't, unfortunately, we can't show you all the fun that we're going to have. Um, have a wonderful week. Find out. You gotta come and join.
What was the biggest struggle or challenge that you had on moving here? Dealing with, figuring out how to deal with the, the loneliness. I knew that it's gonna take a long time to build up, but I had that feeling already, because as, as I said, I did, my whole life I've been reaching out to Jews growing up on Fridays, and I actually went to different Kabbalah's and I knew it's a process, I wasn't expecting that. It's just gonna like, everyone's gonna show up and everything's gonna go. It was interview. You know, the, but the, the, I'm saying the reality check is the hardest part. Like when you realize that you're in it, like, oh wow, this is. Someone could read a hundred parent books, or a hundred parent lectures, and then boom, they have a child. They're like, oh my gosh. They read everything about it. They learned everything about it. But when it hits you, it's like, wow. Like it's still like a big shock in a way. I guess confusion and like, where do we even start? You know, you see people and they already have a Chabad house and have like things going and it's like, how are we gonna get there? It was a lot about like external. I think that was a very big challenge. So you saw all these big yeah, houses like you and you're trying to figure out how you how do you get, get to there. there. Which was yeah. Hey everyone, we just finished a three day holiday where we couldn't use any electricity. It's customary at the end of Shavuot, the end of every holiday, Chabad has a custom to have a fabring, an energetic fabring, where we sing, we say inspiring words. Okay, and now 10 years later, what would you say, what would you say the challenge now is? I'd say raising kids. What okay, so we, we don't have a school here, so we're homeschooling. The girls do, do online school, but it's not everything. Like, you're, you really have to be involved. Uh, make sure that, you know, they have what they need socially, emotionally. There's a lot of, a lot of figuring out of them. They say I'm, I'm from Colombia without adding misery. They say, oh, you're from Colombia. How does it feel to live all the way in Colombia? Do you like, do you like living on online school? Yeah, but sometimes it's hard to focus online. Well, we start at 7.45 and then we end at 1.20. But that's just because of my time zone, central time. It's, it goes by Eastern time. Then there's a Western time and there's an Israel time. So man, where are the other students here from? Uh, well, I have some in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I have like a few in... Europe. A few in Europe in your class? Yes, I have. In South America, I was talking about Colombia. I have one so that means they're, Columbia. are they learning in the middle of the night? Some of it, like, so, that's why some people don't go to afternoon class in my class, because it's too late for them. Oh. And are all these all these students, but they're, what are they doing in those places? They're doing their shulchas too. Rewind 10 years. Is there anything that you would do differently? Yeah, I would definitely, like, tell myself, like, like not to worry about all those external things and just focus inward and be very present. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, so you're just wasting time <laughs> trying to figure out how to be be something when you're ready something you don't have to work on. Make sure our success is not our failure. I Meaning a lot of times we you're gonna get you reach out to Jewish people and you, you come in and say you contend with what you're doing. So you don't wanna ever ever be satisfied. You always wanna be doing more and more and more. And more and more and more doesn't always mean in in quantity. There's a very individualized the personal connection that people have like you know you're young you're very you don't people feel very comfortable they don't feel like you're just you don't want to be like oh i'm holier than thou you know i'm, I'm already a rabbi for so many years i know so much and you just you probably don't you know you have to and that's something that when we just come out we don't have because we're still young not because i'm smarter or I'm more talented it's just that i grew up in this way it's not you never to feel like i'm Hello. holier i'm smarter and i know more about judaism we have to always make sure that we don't feel that way. Yes, we just spent a whole three days of Shavuos without any technology. We just spent it all together. What did we do the whole Shavuos? No, we did 50 days. What did, what did we do? We played hide and seek. We played, did we play catch the flag? No. Did we play Red Dog Green Light? Yes. Let's see, what Hello. else did we do? Hello. Yeah, and yes, you didn't know how to play. I go see, try to cheat. What about your kids? How, how do you, what's here for them? How does a Chabad rabbi make that decision when they know they're going to have children? They're not going to have the, the basics of, of what, so to speak, a traditional Jew usually gets. It's very boring on Shabbos here. Why? Why is it boring on Shabbos here? Well, we don't have, like, if, from communities, you just go to your friend's house with them. I, I'm just here with them bunch of my siblings and there's like nothing really going on. We only have guests at night, especially in the summer. There's no guests even at night. Mm -hmm. usually it must students. be really high. Well, first of all, they get the best education. They're hands-on. They're, they're living the life. They're not just taught it and do um, and have it part of their schedule. They're actually living and breathing every moment of trying to 
be an example of what it means to be to keep Torah and mitzvahs. When there's less of something, it makes it sort of seem more valuable. What do you mean? So, for example, when there's um, Bentleys, right? Yeah, I mean, Bentley is always an expensive car, but you don't see too many. Every time you see one, oh wow, that's exciting. So, since it's, well, my, my kids know that there's not so many children walking around that are wearing a yarmulke, that are walking around in a certain modest type of clothes, they feel empowered. They feel some more. They feel more. They feel more responsible in a way. Obviously, they would rather. They would like to have a pizza shop that they go to on Thursday nights when they want some pizza, not just some homemade pizza, which I think I'm a pretty good. I think I make a pretty good homemade pizza. But they would rather go to a pizza shop or an ice cream store. Most of the times they're happy. Obviously, they have times that they're like, "Oh, I rather. I wish I wasn't here." But at the ultimate, they realize that this. It's such a big honor and a, such a big privilege that they have. You know, it's chut. A big, it's an opportunity for them, and they and I, I feel like they're happy about it. And I try to infuse that as much as possible to give them that that pride that we have a chabad house and we're here for every Jew, no matter what. In that way, and I think I hope they're doing. I think they're happy. Lucy, are you happy? Yeah. Can't hear you. Yeah. Do you want to move back to Crown Heights? <laughs> Why? Because they speak. <laughs> wow. The friends that they told them that they're in, the Chabad, in their schools, they're living pretty much the same life. Some of them might be from a little bigger of a city, so there might be a little bit more Jewish infrastructure. What do you do the rest of the day? Well, after that, they don't teach me what they call like English and math English and, and science and stuff. So then I learned that for some of the time. Then... How do you learn that? Does your mommy teach you? English and math? Sometimes my mommy teach me, sometimes I have a tutor come. When do you ever get to see your classmates? Sometimes I meet them up in New York by summer break and by kiddos and winter camp, camp. In addition to the regular challenge of education for our children, where we were blessed with a, a child that has special needs on the spectrum of autism, he needs a system, a normal school to go to. We don't have it here. We're forced to send him to public school. And it's very hard for us. We, we know that this, we have no choice and we have to do this. When, when I was in kindergarten, almost everybody in my school asked me, what is that hat? And sometimes I just get too embarrassed for some reason. My hands are hard on. Sometimes I feel like I want to wear a cap on top of my yarmulke, but it's a shkaka pretz because they don't anyway let hats or hoods in the building. With a shkaka pretz that could show up Jewish. I'm the only one that wears a yarmulke in Sitsis, and I'm a proud to be a Jew. Are they respectful of the Yama consistence? I mean, like, they're not, they're mean, like, they're not respectful, they're not not respectful, like. What do you mean? They're not, like, res coming in and saying, like, saying, whoa, Magno, pr congratulations on honoring me and clapping, <laughs> but, like, they're respectful, like, they don't, they don't, like, like, make fun of it, like, bad, and they don't, like, say anything good about it. They just, uh, one time I was with my friend and, and he asked, like, what present do you get for Christmas? I'm like, and I said proudly, I don't celebrate Christmas. I tell them that it shows that ha ha Hashem is, wa is watching us. Just like this is above us, Hashem's above us, and Hashem is watching us. They actually more asked me what is, like, the strings. Like, they saw the most of them, like, saw the hat before, but they never really saw, like, the, the sits, the sits, this. I don't care if they ask me what, all these questions, like, what I'm explaining. They sometimes ask, like, what is the mitzvah, and then if I'm sitting there, they ask, what is that Shem? So I just tell them nicely. What would you say if you, when people ask you, why do you live in Columbia, Missouri? What do you tell them? We want to know what inspires a Chabad rabbi to leave Crown Heights, to leave the Jewish community, the, the nest of Orthodox Jews, that we have everything we need. What, what would you say your mission here is in Columbia? What are you doing living in Columbia, Missouri? Why don't you guys live in Crown Heights? Oh, because we, are, we do shmucha. Simply, it's just to be there for every single Jew. Because the best thing for a Jew is to do Torah mitzvahs and to be connected to their Judaism. So, of course, we'll encourage them to do another mitzvah. To teach all the Yiddin about Torah mitzvahs. Do you, get, do you ever find yourself getting to do that? Yes, a lot of times. Give it out to Shabbos candles, I'll show you right now. The Rebbe said to you on a mission to help other Jews people. We, growing up, we were always taught the value of a Jew. Uh, every Jew has inside of him an neshama, a soul. And this soul is part of Hashem, part of God. And we were always taught that. In Hasidic philosophy, he speaks about that a lot. The, the greatness of, of a Jew, of one individual Jew. And always growing up, we always had like this, um, as, as um, as young young students in yeshiva, one of one of our 
routines would be every Friday we would go out, it's called Mephtayim, and we would have, we would meet Jews, and we would have an encounter, like a mitzvah encounter, put on tefillin with them, uh, put a mezuzah up, different mitzvah we would do with them, and we call them Mephtayim. And that was, so to say, like the train to show you, to show us as a student growing up, the value of a Jew and the value of every individual mitzvah. The Chabad of the Chabad is to be a place for Jewish people to them, to connect to the fellow Jews, and as we say to themselves, to their, their inner calling. What are you helping other Jewish people do? Uh, oh, yeah. Are yeah, you helping? What about the women? What do they do? The candles. The like, Shabbos candles. So that's it? You just to fill in, in candles? Is that the only thing? No, there's more stuff. There's more stuff. Give out cheesecake. Cheesecake for Shavuos. We blow the shofar. We blow shofar from Rosh Hashanah. We, we tell them to shake the lulav. We shake the lulav on circus. Oh, they dance with the Torah. We dance with the Torah on Simchas. Torah. Yeah. When we like, we give out like little menorah things. When do we give out menorahs? On Purim? No. On Pesach? Ch Chanukah, we give out menorahs. We give out matzah. Oh, matzah, so every Jew can have matzah to eat and on we Pesach. And also, now back to time. So, whenever he was, before he was married, um, in Chabad, they have this year of like internship where get sent somewhere in the world um, when you're around 20, 20 years old, you get, some, you get sent to different um, yeshivas in the world to help out the yeshiva. So Rabbi Remy was sent to Australia and he was assigned to my class in high school. So we used to study once a week. I was probably 14 years old and we used to once a week. And then when Rabbi Remy became a Chabad rabbi here in America and he moved out to Colombia, he asked me to come to help him out for the Kippur one year. And I came and I've basically been back ever since. So this is my eighth year back in, uh, back in Columbia. I come here all the time. Just have, I guess, Chabad supported. Is, it, like, is there international... There's international support, but not funding. Okay, so not funding. So what, do, what does it mean international support? What type of support is there? So the, the, the community, the Chabad community, the broader you know, Chabad on campus is very supportive. So they'll give us like training and fundraising you know, try to help us um, so that we're successful, but there's no funding, like you have to do your own funding. And like we, you spoke about the, you know, these challenges, what would you say the biggest reward, the joy? <laughs> um, Is there joy? It's or just, it just <laughs> it's like, it's like, um, it's really just interacting with students and community. Like when we have a holiday or something, and people come together and you see the joy that you're bringing people and how important it is for them. So that it brings fulfillment. I would say that's the, the rule. Like. Do you do you teach like, yeah. Torah classes? Yeah. You teach Torah mm -hmm. classes as well. It's mm -hmm. just the women, or I do. Um, well, this semester it depends on the semester what I'm available for. But I did um, a women's class. I do, I do a women's class on Sundays. That's for the community, oh, and right. it's yeah that I I really enjoy. Um, I feel like I'm just like learning with my friends. Like it's very. Um, Hi there, my name is Dylan Burmeyer. I'm a senior at Mizzou. Actually, I just graduated. I started going to Chabad there when I was a freshman. It was like the second or third week of school. I didn't know anybody, so it was really cool starting and getting familiarized with Judaism and learning a lot. And the rabbi really took me into part of his family and I'll forever be grateful. Hi, my name is Kylie Walk and Mizzou Chabad is truly one of the most welcoming places on campus. And it's somewhere where you can really express and love your religion without any judgment and it honestly has created a true home away from home for me. And we finally made it back in New York City. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you want to see more Chabad houses, more behind the scenes, want to know more how about rats, subscribe, don't forget to like. I hope you guys enjoyed a wonderful day.